This is a video for grade 5S of the RT Alderman School in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And for everyone that wants to meet my two little electrified friends, the photon and the electron. They are super small, so we cannot really see them with our naked eye. But with their help, we will understand how we can use the sun to power our homes, our phones, my little PlayStation controller, and even big things like cars and school buses. Hi everyone, I am Electrified Veronica. Your teacher, Mrs. Malouche, invited me to talk to you about electricity and our environment and I can't wait to meet you next week. Why am I calling myself Electrified Veronica? Well, sometimes I look a little bit electrified. But most of the times I am electrified because I want a world where we use energy from the sun and other renewables like the wind to get electricity and power our homes, your toys and even cars and school buses. I hope this video will electrify you too. Listen carefully and there will be a fun task for you until we meet next week. So I am a scientist. More specifically, I am a physicist. So I have the same job as Albert Einstein or Marie Curie. Both of them were scientists and both of them did a lot of experiments and a lot of thinking that is very important for our lives and for all the technology that we have today. And I want you to know that you can do the same. Every one of you can learn and understand anything you want. Today, I will introduce you into how a physicist like me sees the world. So let's start our little journey. This is the sun. No, actually, this is what the sun really looks like. The sun is a huge star far, far away from us. And as you can see, it looks really, really hot. And it is very hot. Now, what if I told you that the sun produces energy? It produces solar energy. It is a physical reaction in the sun and in this reaction a photon is created. So this is our first electrified friend. His name is Photon. It's a light particle. It's not only one photon, it's billions and trillions and billions and trillions and billions and trillions each and every second. It's a lot. After a photon is born in the sun, it travels to Earth. It's a very, very, very long trip from the sun to the earth through space. But the photons are super fast. They travel at the speed of light. So it only takes them eight minutes to travel from sun to earth. Now, what happens when a photon arrives at earth? When you are outside, you can feel it. It's actually the sunlight that is very warm on your skin. So these are the little light particles, the photons that arrive from the sun at the earth on your skin. Now, scientists were thinking a lot about what light is, what a light particle is, and they did a lot of experiments. And it was actually Albert Einstein who found that we can transform a photon into electricity. Now let's understand what is electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons. So this is my second electrified friend over here. His name is Electron. Again, he's super, super small. You cannot see him with naked eye, but he exists. An electron together with other millions and billions and millions and billions of other electrons are responsible for electricity. So electricity is the flow of electrons. So let's come back to Albert Einstein's idea of converting photons, so light, into electricity. We need a solar panel for that. Have you seen them before? These are mostly blue or sometimes black, very thin plates. You can see them on roofs, you can see them in big fields, and recently I have also seen them floating on water. Look at that house. 
The whole roof is covered by solar panels. Does any one of you have seen solar panels on a roof? So this is our solar panel. And now we want to understand what happens when a photon hits this panel. When a photon traveling at the speed of light hits this panel, boom, it is turned into an electron. So this electron is free to flow and together with lots of other electrons, it creates electricity. Today you can tell your parents that you learned about Einstein's photoelectric effect. Congratulations, you are partly electrified. So what are we doing with electricity once we generated it? I want you to walk through your classroom, say hi to Jimmy the Gecko and find things that need electricity. You can do the same after school when you go home today and walk through your room, walk through the house and through the outside of the house and find things that need electricity. Which toys and tools that you are using need electricity? I am doing the same in my home. You will see that some things that I'm using have a cable to connect to the wall to get electricity and get the electrons flowing, but others do not. A good example is this PlayStation controller. You can see that I can use that without a cable. So there must be something inside this controller that stores electricity and provides it to the thing while I am playing. And this is what we call the battery. The battery is something that I am personally very passionate about. A battery stores electricity and provides it to us when we need it. This is my toothbrush. You can see it has a cable to provide electricity, but at the same time I can take it off and I can use it without a cable, which means there is a little battery inside that stores the electricity when I need this thing in my mouth. These are my headphones. You can see there is no cable, so there must be a battery inside that stores electricity when I need it and when I want to listen to something. But at the same time, I can use this cable here and connect it to charge the battery. So batteries come in different types, different materials, different shapes, different forms. For example, this one is a battery that I just took out of this um, camera here. Then let me see. These little batteries, you might not believe it, but these are the batteries that are in your car. Maybe you've heard about Tesla. These are the batteries that Tesla uses to power their cars. This is a very big battery. It's called a pouch battery cell. You see, it's very thin, completely different shape than the others, but it's also here to store electricity and power electric cars or even electric school buses. Now it's your turn to become electrified. Have fun walking around through your classroom, through your home, outside of the home. Find some things that need electricity. Find things that need batteries. Look around. Can you find some solar panels? Next time when we meet, I will introduce you to my third little electrified friend. She is called Mrs. Lithium Ion. Mrs. Lithium Ion is really, really important for the battery to work and we will understand why. Have a wonderful week. Bye.